our customers almost always make two different decisions. The first decision is, will I? Will I buy something in this product category? After they've said yes to the will I decision, then they go on and say, okay, which one am I going to go buy? Most of the time they go on to say, okay, which one am I going to go buy? Uh, Dr. Jeff, I just got to ask the question. Did you consider more, what, by the way, what car did you buy? Okay, we'll just call it a Lexus. It's fine. Did you consider any other ones? Did you go out and look and shop for cars? Yeah, yeah okay. So, so he said, Jeff said, look, I've, uh, I've hit my midlife crisis. I want to really, <laughs> I want a really expensive, fast car. So let me go shop for a bunch of different vehicles and which one's going to meet my needs the best. Right? But, but how about the rest of you? Are you, Stormy, are you in the market for a new car right now? So you're not in the market. Okay, so he's not saying yes to will I. So he's not out shopping for a new car. If I were selling cars and I'm trying to sell one to, to Stormy, I better be talking about why you need a new car. Right? What's the value of switching whatever the vehicle is you have today? And if you're thinking about yourself, what would it take for you to say, yeah, I need to go buy a new car? That's the will I decision. That's the information that someone needs when they're making a will I decision. After they've said yes to will I, then they go on and say, okay, now which one am I going to go buy? Now, this is a really, really important concept. And we'll see why for several different reasons. First reason is when people are making a will I decision, price is not driving that decision. Something else is driving that decision. If we can recognize that people are in a will I decision, we don't need to focus so much on the price. In fact, sometimes there are products where people only make a will I decision. Who's been bungee jumping? Guy has. Okay, we're going to go. My wife has because I was there. But uh, <laughs> Guy, we're going to go with you. Guy, uh, where did you go? You're going to ruin my story. I can tell that already. But that's okay. We'll go with it. So when you, um, first time you went, how much was it? Do you remember? hundred bucks? First time you went, did you say to yourself, gee, I could go here or I could wait and go somewhere else. Let me shop around where I want to go bungee jumping. Nope. It was just here or I'm not going to do it or I'm not going to do it. Yeah. So, so he essentially made a will I decision, right? Am I going to go do it or not? A very first time. We're going back to the first time now, right? hundred bucks. Would you go on if it was 125? 150, 200, probably, okay. Notice that price wasn't driving that decision. He didn't look at competitive alternatives. He wasn't shopping around. He was saying, am I gonna do this or not do this? He said, here's the price, and the price they charged turned out to be way less than what he was actually willing to pay. So the rest of us, we're all really good friends of guys uh, we show up on the day that he's going to go bungee jumping for the very first time. We are right there with him. We're giving him emotional support. It's a hundred bucks. Who's actually going to jump with him? Who's spending their hundred bucks to jump with him? Okay, so we've got a few takers. We've got a few takers. You're going to stand and clap? Okay. Okay, so for those of us who are not going to jump, I, I would have, but Darren, since you, you spoke up for me, help me out, would you? Um, would you have gone for 75? 50. It's a Walmart. It's a loan tie decision. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so, right. Exactly. The key is price isn't driving the decision. Something else is driving that decision. What we want to be able to do is understand when our buyers are making will I decisions and when our buyers are making which one decision. There are products and there are situations where our buyers are only making a will I decision. They never go on to make a which one decision. An easy way to think about that is they never considered a competitive alternative. They just said, I need to buy from you. Here are two great examples of this. Popcorn at the movie theater. You walk into the movies, you chose your movie because of where the theater is or what time it's showing or what the movie is. And, and after you walk in, 
you say, am I going to take out a mortgage today to buy popcorn or not? <laughs> but, but the thing is, you didn't get to choose someplace else to get popcorn. Do you know you can get free popcorn at Ace Hardware? It's free. Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's free. But the key here is when people buy after only making a will I decision, they weren't price sensitive. Price didn't drive that decision. So here's some free money for you. If, you. if you know that a buyer, you have a product where buyers are only making will I decisions, if you raise the price 10% today, it won't change your demand. If they raise the price of popcorn 10%, does that change whether or not you buy popcorn at the theater? Absolutely not. If they <laughs> On the other hand, most of the time people are making which one decisions. I have to say the vast majority of our purchases of our customers, they're deciding, do I want you or someone else? Do I want this product or something else? I'm going to go shop around. I want the best bang for the buck. I want the best deal I can get. And so as a quick example, you're going to go to a store. You got to buy a can of green beans. You can either buy Del Monte green beans or you can buy Safeway Kitchen's green beans. Don't care which one. <laughs> Who's buying Del Monte? Make a decision. Who's buying Del Monte? Oh, wait, wait, wait. I got to give you more information. Del Monte costs a buck 69. Safeway Kitchens is only $1.49. Okay, who's going with Del Monte? We have most, uh, probably half the room. Who's going with Safeway? All right. Del Monte. Why'd you go with Del Monte, Jeff? Name brand, right? Good expectations of higher quality possible. You trust it. Nice. Nice. Anything else? Any other reasons why you would go with Del Monte? Yeah, I think that's a label thing. I think it might be in the other one too, but it's okay. I'm with you. Um, but the key is you, you said you think it's pretty much the same bean, same factory, same can, different label. And that's possible. I, you know, may or may not be true. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to read the labels and see what it says, right? And we're going to make a conscious decision on is this a better one or the same thing, not the same thing. So in all honesty, I don't really care which one you chose. What I do care about is how you made the decision. And every one of you made the decision the exact same way. Every one of you said, Del Monte is 20 cents more. Is it worth it? Would I pay 20 cents more for Del Monte? And for some of you, the answer to that was yes. And for some of you, the answer to that was no. But this is exactly how your buyers are making decisions. If I'm going to choose between you and a competitor, I'm looking at the price difference. And I'm saying, are you worth I'm assuming you're more expensive. I'm saying, are you worth it? But what's really fascinating, what I really love about the story is I actually don't care what's true. The only thing I care about is what you believe is true. What you believe is true is what made all the difference in the decision that you just made. When I coach companies on how to build products and how to, how to think about this problem, I teach them, look, you want to build products that are better than your competitors' products. But if you're not marketing that, if you're not convincing and explaining and showing your buyers that your products truly are different, truly are better, then you won't get paid for it because they don't perceive the value. So the question is, are we building products that are better than our competitors? And are we marketing that? Are we communicating that to our customers? Everything we've talked about so far and everything I'm ever going to talk about in pricing is how do we put ourselves in the shoes of our buyers? How do we think the way our buyers think? If I can understand whatever this guy's thinking, sitting on the edge of a building looking down, maybe I can start to understand how much he's willing to pay. What are the things he values?